Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Thursday, the 7th of November. Prime Minister Modi inaugurates Global Investors Meet in Northern India. India says Pakistan creating confusion ahead of Kartarpur Corridor inauguration. And Sri Lankan presidential frontrunner Premadasa vows stronger foreign policy. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi made a pitch for investment and self-employment while addressing the two-day global investors meet in India's Himachal Pradesh province on Thursday. He said his government is taking decisions that have helped industrial grassroots mechanism get better. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Thursday inaugurated the two-day global investors meet in Dharamsala town of India's northern Himachal Pradesh province and made a pitch for investment and self-employment. Speaking about improvement in India's ranking in the Ease of Doing Business Index, the Prime Minister highlighted that the country is now among the top 10 performers and has approved its rank by 79 points between 2014 and 2019. He said the improved ranking means the government is taking decisions that have helped industrial grassroots mechanisms get better. ये सिर्फ रैंकिंग में सुधार ही नहीं, बल्कि भारत में बिजनेस करने के तरीके में एक रिवॉल्यूशन है, एक बहुत बड़ी क्रांति है, और इस रिवॉल्यूशन में साल दर साल हम नए आयाम जोड़ रहे हैं। during the two-day global investors meet, eight sectoral sessions would be held besides business to government meetings with entrepreneurs. As many as 209 foreign delegates and local entrepreneurs are participating in the mega event. Pollution levels in Indian capital New Delhi stood at alarming levels on Thursday as the city remained covered in thick smog. The air quality in Delhi continued to remain in the poor category for the second day. Pollution levels in Indian capital New Delhi stood at alarming levels on Thursday as the city remained covered in thick smog. The air quality in Delhi remained in the poor category, said System of Air Quality and Weather Forecasting and Research or SAFAR. According to U.S. Embassy pollution data, the latest amount of PM 2.5 at 10 a.m. was recorded at 281 under very unhealthy air quality index. Locals attributed the improvement in the air quality index to the newly implemented odd-even car rationing scheme and the wind current that blew away dust and pollutants from the air. Uh, pollution is why it's become an odd-even start. Odd-even traffic is very low. But हाँ हवा चल गई है तो pollution थोड़ा सा रख गया है तो दिल्ली पे से थोड़ा pollution कम हुआ है but still pollution तो है ही अभी cycle ride करने पे भी बहुत दिक्कतें होती हैं. Meanwhile, the pollution level in River Yamuna, which flows through the national capital, looked worrying as a thick layer of white foam covered the surface of the river. Yamuna River fulfills three quarters of New Delhi's water needs. Several polluting industrial units pollute the water of the river on a daily basis, regardless of the fact. कहाँ कुछ कर रहा है कितना दिन से चल रहा है इतना भी चलता पानी है तो कुछ बुझा रहा है जो साफ पानी है आना जब बंद होगा तो यहाँ आदमी नहाता नहीं, नहीं है इतना इसको बदबू आता है जो इस सीवर के पानी आता है इसमें और नाला खाता का सब पानी आता है इसी में इसी से ही गंदगी चला है Meanwhile, New Delhi witnessed a drizzling which is expected to settle the suspended particles present in the air improved little respite from pollution. In order to tackle smog, Delhi government has banned construction activities, restricted the use of private cars according to odd even number plates. India's foreign ministry on Thursday said that the agreement between India and Pakistan on cross-border Kartarpur corridor states passport as requirement for Indian pilgrims to use the facility. 
The ministry said Islamabad is creating confusion as conflicting reports are coming from the Pakistani side. India's Foreign Ministry on Thursday said that Pakistan is creating confusion right before the inauguration of the cross-border Kartarpur corridor as conflicting reports are coming on whether Indian pilgrims will require passport to visit the Kartarpur Sahib Shrine using the new facility. While addressing a weekly press briefing, Foreign Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said that an agreement was signed between the two countries finalizing the modalities for visits by Indian pilgrims and it states that passport will be needed. We are going to go by the requirements as stipulated in the existing MOU. Uh, so those undertaking the journey on the 9th and even later, they have to go by what is, uh, is, is, perhaps it con is contained in, in, in the MOU which has been signed till the MOU gets revised or amended to include other provisions which are being requested or proposed by the Pakistani side. This came after Pakistani media reports quoted Chief of Pakistan Army's media wing, Major General Asif Ghafoor, saying that the entry of Indian pilgrims would be under a permit on a passport-based identity. Earlier, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan had announced last week on Twitter that the passport will not be required. Both sides had last month signed an agreement allowing at least 5,000 Indian pilgrims to visit the Sikh shrine every day through the corridor visa-free. Moving on to news from Pakistan. Inflation in Pakistan has skyrocketed in recent months, adding to economic headwinds besetting Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Residents in Karachi blamed rampant corruption, failed government policies for the widening inflation that has left Pakistan's economy in downward spiral. Inflation in Pakistan has skyrocketed in recent months, adding the economic headwinds besetting Prime Minister Imran Khan's government. Residents in Karachi expressed their dismay over rising inflation. They said the sharp price rise in food items, fuel and transport costs have squeezed household budgets and government is only doing lip service. Locals accuse the establishment of being apathetic towards their plight and making tall claims of bringing prosperity. Pakistan's economy is on a downward spiral for the past couple of years because of massive debts, rampant corruption to unemployment, inflation and widening fiscal deficit the economy continues to be shaky. Sir, this mehngai ne to bilkul hamari jo hai gareeb aadmi ki to kamar tod di hai. Gareeb aadmi to bilkul ab khane se bhi mohtaj ho gaya hai is mehngai mein. Jo bechare tankhaon wale hain wo to bilkul jo hai unka to beda gharak ho gaya hua hai is mehngai ne. Mehngai ne to मतलब कि अब जो है जो सौदा पहले जो है पांच हजार का गरीब आदमी लेता था अब वो सात हजार रुपए का वो सौदा ले रहा है लेकिन वो बिचारा जो उसकी तनखा तो वही है ना तनखा तो उसकी नहीं बढ़ी है तो कुमोते होती हैं वो कंट्रोल करके लोगों को जो है सब्सिडीज देती हैं कुछ करती हैं लेकिन गुरु गुरबत का जो गरीबों का जो है ना वो जीना इस वक्त बड़ा महाल हो चुका है और पाकिस्तान के अंदर हुकूमत हुकूमती इकदाम कहीं नज़र नहीं आ रहा सिर्फ पैसे लेने के लिए टैक्स लेने के लिए बातें की जाती हैं टैक्स तो हर चीज़ पे जो कौम दे रही है पाकिस्तान की कौम किस चीज़ पे टैक्स नहीं दे रही है लेकिन उसका या जो जो उनको बेनिफिट मिलना चाहिए जो कौम को बेनिफिट मिलना चाहिए लोगों को बेनिफिट मिलना चाहिए वो मिल नहीं मीन वाइल अकॉर्डिंग टू अ रिपोर्ट बाई पाकिस्तान ब्यूरो ऑफ स्टेटिस्टिक्स ऑन वेंसडे Prices of seasonal essential goods continued to rise as inflation clocked in at 11% in October 2019 from a year ago. The International Monetary Fund that recently approved the 13 bailout package to Pakistan has estimated that inflation may escalate up to 13%. In from Afghanistan, spokesperson of Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani Sadiq Siddiqui has confirmed that the government has finalized the list of participants for the China meeting on Afghan peace. Siddiqui said the meeting will provide a process that paves the way for a negotiation between the Afghan government and the Taliban. Spokesperson of Afghan President Ashraf Ghani Sadiq Siddiqui has confirmed that the government has finalized the list of participants for the China meeting on Afghan peace. Siddiqui on Wednesday said the meeting could provide a process that paves the way for a negotiation between the Afghan government and the Taliban. 
The update by the president's spokesperson came after he informed on Monday that Ghani, in a telephonic conversation with Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, has agreed to the meeting, which will be held in Beijing. So Siddiqui said the meeting will include a Taliban delegation to discuss Afghanistan's peace agreement, according to local media reports. However, the date of the talks in Beijing has not been yet confirmed. Reports suggest the Taliban has also confirmed that it has been invited for the meeting by Chinese government and a delegation will attend it. Sri Lanka's presidential frontrunner Sajitha Premadasa has vowed to strengthen the country's foreign policy with all nations as well as work towards a stronger economy if he wins the presidential polls. A total of 35 candidates are in fray for elections scheduled on 16th of November. Sri Lanka's presidential frontrunner Sajid Premadasa has vowed to strengthen the country's foreign policy with all nations as well as work towards a stronger economy if he wins the presidential poll. Sajid Premadasa, the presidential candidate of Sri Lanka's ruling United National Front, had last week launched his election manifesto in the central hills of Kandy. He pledged to end corruption, eliminate drugs, work towards addressing the human elephant conflict implementing disaster management and promoting further trade and investments. Taking to Twitter on Thursday, Premadasa said his manifesto is based on his 25 years of saving the country and he's always willing to back it up. Premadasa had earlier written to his main opponent Gotabaya Rajapaksa, renewing his challenge for a live public debate. Gotabaya is a former wartime defence chief and brother of former President Mahinda Rajapaksa. A total of 35 candidates are in fray for the presidential election scheduled to be held on 16th of November. Scores of foreign tourists have been thronging India's desert province of Rajasthan to witness the ongoing bright and colourful Pushkar Fair. Primarily an animal fair, the annual event has grown to become a desert folk carnival. Popular annual fair in Temple Town of Pushkar is attracting tourists from across the globe to experience the culture and tradition of India's desert province of Rajasthan. The Pushkar fair is primarily famous for trade of animals, mainly camels, but it has grown to become a desert folk carnival over the years, hosting events of folk dances and music. Apart from cultural programs, moustache competition, puppet and magic shows, Camel races and rides are also prime attraction for tourists looking to experience a flavour of India's royal province. Very good, very exciting. Lots of people, lots of noise. Yeah, great. Loving it. Yeah, very different. Exotic. Huh? It's a big bazaar. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, well, very nice. The Pushkar Fair offers a once-in-a-lifetime experience for tourists. The annual fair traditionally concludes on the full moon night of Hindu month of Karthik that falls on November 12th. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Prime Minister Modi inaugurates Global Investors Meet in Northern India. India says Pakistan creating confusion ahead of Kratarpur Corridor inauguration. And Sri Lankan presidential frontrunner Premadasa vows stronger foreign policy. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsLine.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsLine and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsLine. It's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.